hear the voices again. Oh God. Oh God. Chance that we are really waiting that all those empty chairs, look around, those empty chairs, to not be empty on April the 17th. Because this day is the day to preach what? Jesus and the resurrection. And I'm telling you, my friend, people want to hear that. Even the Athenians were open to hear that. Because we all know that life goes beyond this life. They are eager to experience what we only have, resurrection power. There were two groups of philosophers debating with Paul in Acts chapter 17. Very particular group, the Epicureans and the Stoics. Just for your curiosity. The Epicureans generally believed that God existed, but he was not interested or involved with humanity. So their main purpose of life was to find the ultimate pleasure. While the Stoics philosophers, they also had a idea of God but God was only the soul of the world and God was above every emotion so their ultimate goal was to be emotionless without feelings at all and Paul is trying his best to show that the God the true God he's personal He's not a distant Greek style Roman pantheon God that just give orders but does not interact. On the contrary, he took our place. He took our sins. Upon him was our transgressions and our sins. And because of his stripes, we are healed. Come on somebody. So it's more than just that idea, uh, fathom, ether, subjective about God. He's a person that wants to relate to us, not to develop a religion with us. Now I need to alert to you that we don't want to fall into the Athenians' attitude. Because they probably were exposed to the same concepts we will be exposed in Ephesians. But the result in Athens was, Acts chapter 17, verse 21. Now, all the Athenians and the foreigners who live there, we spend their time in nothing. Accepting, except telling or hearing something new. A few weeks ago, talking to Pastor John, he challenged me about this, and I had to agree. We Christians, we, with the evangelical tradition, oh, how much we like to learn new things. It seems that if we come to Sunday morning and there's no something new, we feel that that was not a good service. We're just missing something. And he, maybe because of his age and life, he came to the conclusion that actually the apostles insisted with us. It's better we don't become masters of everything because we're going to be charged even more on the day of judgment. But God, Jesus, is calling us to be doers of the word. We're not supposed to be sages or cognizant of the truth, but doers and practitioners of it. There's more still. So Paul is not only exposing the truth to be learned, but the truth to be lived. That's why in the book or the letter in, uh, of Ephesians, um, the early church fathers help us a lot dividing in chapters. Remember, nobody writes a letter in chapters in verses, right? So this is us only for us for the future help of the believers, which, by the way, was a great help. And... I don't know if it was intentional or not, but it seems as it was. Get your Bible. And you're going to notice that we, we have six chapters in Ephesians. But the, starting off the second half, chapter 4, the chapter 4 starts with a key word. Can you guys find it? What is the key word that opens chapter 4 of Ephesians? Everybody, go to your Bible. Don't look to me. Not going to be projected. It's a Bible study. Use your Bible. So... Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 starts with a key word. What is the key word there? Therefore. And therefore is a conjugation that implies what? Implies what? 
you're going to do with what I taught you in the previous chapters. So again, the truth we're going to be exposed will demand, will challenge you and I into doing something about it. So if you want to just come and learn and philosophy and make some theology and say that now you made your Bible study, don't return next Sunday. But if you're looking to apply the word of God, the truth that sets you free and bring freedom also to everyone that listens to this message, keep coming, keep bringing more people. Now, Paul uh, is now arriving in Corinth. We're just making the second missionary trip of Paul until we're going to get there. He arrives in Corinth. It's a, uh, a city that he spends a lot of his time in ministry. And it is there in Corinth, Acts chapter 18, that Paul seems to finally embrace the ministry, the focus of his ministry to be an apostle for the Gentiles, the non-Jew folk. You and I were included in that group that Paul embraced. That's why we love to, to read his letters. Because they were actually addressed to us. Acts chapter 19 is when Paul finally exercised his ministry in the city of Ephesus. It is there in Ephesus... That Paul is confirmed as the apostle of grace. Acts chapter 19, verse 9. And there he reasoned. Again, he uses this word. He reasoned daily in the hall of Tyrannus. This continued for two years. How many years? And I'm daring to preach Ephesians in a few weeks. So, come on, guys. Be patient with me. Okay? And don't limit our Bible study in a weekly Bible study. Are you guys with me? Bring it to your weekday, please. Open the book and the letter of, Eph uh, of Ephesians in your weekday. Let me hear a good amen in this house. Actually, some manuscripts even say this, that for two years, every day... From 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., Paul continued to preach the gospel so that all the residents of Asia heard the word of the Lord, both Jews and Greeks. Now, here's the point. The whole area, the whole county of Asia Minor were exposed to the gospel. And the result of that is Acts chapter 19, verse 11. And God was doing extraordinary miracles, hallelujah, by the hands of Paul. So that even handkerchief and aprons that had touched his skin were carried away to the sick. And their disease left them. And the, de and the evil spirits came out of them. Now, I don't know if you're getting the picture here. Paul is preaching, is sharing, is bringing a message. There is something in this message that releases extraordinary miracles. I'm going to repeat it. It's not about Paul. It's not about a special person. It is about the message. You are not a special person. I know that. I know myself. But we carry a very powerful message. So powerful that can change the eternity of a person. It is so powerful that it seems that because Paul had to work aside in order to be able to preach the gospel and not be a financial burden to the ministry he was performing, that the message had some sort of anointing spill over even his clothes. 
It seems that his clothes represented the message he preached. And I like the fact that one of the clothes described here is an apron. It means that Paul was a worker, probably in the marketplace. So please take out this idea of your mind that in order to be used by God, you have to perform in the stage. You have to have a perfect English. Can you hear my English, please? You know, like, come on. Like, we create so many limitations in order to be used by God. Just open your house to host a life group. Just invite your friend to the next meeting in your small group. Just bring somebody in the Easter service. Everybody's open for the Easter service. Acts chapter 18 verse 3 says that he was a tent maker. That he, he had partners in his business. So he could be used by God and also work in the marketplace. What makes us powerful is not our eloquence, our intelligence. It is neither our academic skill set nor our personal charisma. This all can help a lot, but it's not essential. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Because the gospel is the power of God. Say with me, the, the gospel. It's better you tell to a, a neighbor. Just look to somebody and say, the gospel, my brother, is the power of God. Now remind somebody else around you. Say, brother, let me remind you. The gospel is the power of God. It's not you that is powerful. It's not me that is powerful. It's not our church that has. It's our message that is powerful. It is the power of God for the salvation to everyone who believes. To the Jew, to the religious one, or to the non-religion one, Greek or barbarian, it doesn't matter. Man, woman, kids, for in it, verse 17, in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. As, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Pastor, but I don't know the gospel. I'm learning. I feel that maybe... I am not the right person to proclaim or preach the gospel because I don't know the gospel. You definitely know. You know because you had experienced the gospel. The gospel, like Paul is defining, is not only a message. It is a power. It is an experience which you have. You have your story. Your story is a letter that everyone can read. I don't know what to say, Pastor. Just say your story. Just tell your testimony. Just to be a little bit more Christian. Testimony. But in other words, tell your story with God. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 2. You yourselves are our letter of recommendation. Written on our hearts to be known and ready and read by all. And you show that you are a letter from Christ, delivered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God. Not on tablets of stones, but on tablets of human hearts. Say amen, everybody. This week, ask God to create an opportunity for you to share your story with somebody. We're going to, in a few more minutes, just close, but I, I want you to... Ask God, God, just, just create an opportunity for me to tell my story with you. And I want to prepare you because extraordinary miracles will start to happen. We're praying for this Easter service coming up. And one of the, uh, the spiritual impressions we're having is that God is going to move with signs and miracles in April the 17th. Just because you decided to tell your story to somebody. Yeah, I know the miracle happened through the hands of Paul, but also can happen through your hands. During those years, while Paul was preaching the gospel in Ephesus, there were so many amazing things that his message and consequentially, Paul himself became very known. 
the city uh, authorities, uh, Asia Minor, all heard about this man and his message. It is nice when you find more followers in your social media. It's almost inevitable when you proclaim the gospel that people will follow you in your Instagram story. I'm a very testimony of this. During the 21 days, Pastor T was helping me to me create these little short videos that he told me is called stories. And suddenly, from whatever, maybe my mom, my kids were following me. And now I have 4,000 people following me. It's very interesting. Because people are thirsty and hungry for the truth, guys. Don't, don't, don't accept this idea that people are closed for the gospel, that people don't want to know anything about Jesus. People are crazy to know about Jesus. They are really open to. Yeah, we may find one here, here and there that, you know, are just like rebellious and stubborn. But let the true rock break that stubbornness in the right time. We don't need to worry about that. Just, just proclaim. But better than to find followers in the social media is to be known in the spiritual realm. So in his ministry of preaching that message, we hear that Jewish exorcists trying to cast out demons had an encounter with a demon-possessed person. And while they were trying their best to cast out the demon, the demon speaks through the person. Acts chapter 19, verse 15. Jesus I know, and Paul, the demon says, I recognize, but who are you? I don't know about you, it is nice to have social media followers, but I want to make sure that I have my poster spread all over hell, knowing that I'm a big problem for them. <laughs> and look, when we are faithful with this message, my friend, you are a big problem for hell. God is going to start to use you and bring deliverance to your family. Bringing freedom to the captives around you in your college, in your workplace. People are going to ask you to pray because they know you are a man and woman of God. Acts chapter 19 verse 18. Also many of those who are now believers came confessing and divulging their practices and a number of those who may had practiced magic arts brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all and they counted the value of them and found it came to 50,000 pieces of silver so that the word of the Lord continued to increase and prevail mightily. It's not Paul prevailing. We know what's going to happen with Paul eventually. He's going to go to jail. Because Paul is not powerful in himself. We are nothing in ourselves. But our message is powerful. And always prevail. Some speculates that these 50,000 pieces will be equivalent to $6 million in today's value. So real conversion have two important public evidences. Number one, listen to me well, is baptism. Acts chapter 19 says that on hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. This is the people of Ephesus. If you are listening to the gospel... And you are not yet baptized, you are listening something else. Or you are not giving heed to the truth. You are just now pretending that you are part of a, a better group. You like to be around, but you are not allowing the message to change you. Baptism, public declaration that the gospel is real in your life. You have to go through it. There is no restriction for it. Besides believing in Christ Jesus, you have to believe with all your heart, mind, and soul. And make this public to your family, to your friends, 
Post in all your social media. Make sure the world knows you really crossed the Red Sea. You cannot turn back to the Egypt anymore. You are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Number two, there is a detachment. A detachment from things and money that manifests itself in contribution. Because if your words are not followed by your pocket, you're also not listening the gospel. Those people had no problem to burn, I can say, waste part of their assets because there was a better treasure. They found something more valuable. Contribution is a sign of a gospel-based church. In this church, we're not here just to entertain you and make you feel good about yourself every Sunday. We want you to grow in every way. But there is a measurement that we can know if we're growing or not. If it is more contribution in our church. I'm being very honest with you guys. Without the growing of our contribution, I need to stop and let's re reevaluate what kind of message are we preaching. Let me ask you this. Do you think we are preaching the gospel in this church? Let's grow together in our contribution as well. Amen. Acts chapter 20, verse 32. Paul is giving his farewell from his ministry in person in the city of of Ephesus he is leaving the city and he wonder so when did he write this letter here it was years later when he was in a house prison in Rome but after giving himself for almost three years in one single place he's now saying his final words to the church in Ephesus his words in public his words in person Verse 32, and now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Bring me the slide with the logo for our series. We create that because we believe when we have the gospel, our church can be built on Christ. Exactly like Paul says. His grace which is able to build you up. And to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Say amen everybody. Verse 33. I, got, I covet no one's silver or gold or apparel. You yourselves know that these hands ministered to my necessities. And to those who were with me, in all things, I have shown you that by working hard, everybody say working hard. All the young people in this church say working hard. Again, all, only the young people say working hard. So I stop with laziness. This is not a church of lazy young people. This is not a church that creates excuses to not serve. We actually look for opportunities to serve more. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Working hard. I lost my train of thought here. Jesus, help me. In this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he himself said, he himself said, with me say, after me say, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Say it again. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Say amen, everybody. Let's stand up. Pastor, I thought you were preaching on Ephesians, but you were in Acts. I need to give you this background. And just to say that I did not preach in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. Paul, an apostle of Christ. What is an apostle? Someone that is sent by a commission to a mission. 
to a journey with a message. In that sense, we're all apostles. Say amen. amen. Tell your brother or sister, say, we are apostles. Come on, tell, tell confidence, say, we are apostles. In the sense that we are commissioned with a message. Say amen, everybody. By the will of God to the saints who are in Ephesus. You see, Pastor, that's the problem. We are not saints. I am saint. You are a saint because you were sanctified by Christ Jesus. Amen. So find somebody else. Say, we are saints. Come on, tell him or her. Say, we are saints too, brother. We are apostles. We are saints. And because we are commissioned with this message, because we are sanctified by the blood of the Lamb. The result is always, verse 3, grace to you and peace. Verse 2, I'm sorry. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The title of my message is Grace and Peace. If you didn't get anything this morning, I know you're not going to leave without the grace in the peace of Jesus Christ. With your eyes closed, lift that up your hands. Father, I want to declare over your people the multiply, overflowing measure of grace and peace. Father, I know that some people are wondering, is that really for me? Am I supposed to be open to this message? I'm speaking to you that is still wondering about Christian faith. You can make Jesus the Lord of your life with a simple expression of faith from your heart. The Bible says if you believe in your heart, you'll be cleansed. You will become a saint, sanctified by His blood. You just need to make a simple prayer with me. My church, you do help me right now. Repeat it with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I open my heart. I need you. You are my only Savior. And today, I call you my Lord, Jesus Christ. Save me today. I believe in my heart. Therefore, I confess. In your name, I pray. Let's give some shout of praise in this house. Come on, somebody. right now if you consider yourself a believer if you consider yourself a christian baptize in the waters get one of the elements in your hand don't don't eat don't drink yet just hold the elements in your hands as we celebrate together the lord's supper amen just hold it you can you can peel off the bread carefully wrapped out the cup the Bible says when we do that we are reminded of Jesus' sacrifice we are participants of his blessings conquering the cross we are shamelessly unapologetically declaring the sacrifice is enough I need nothing else but his blood and his body through his body we receive healing we receive energy stamina physical soul restoration through his blood forgiveness of sins hearts cleansed boldness to approach before the throne of grace with your eyes closed lifted up the elements father we sit at the table of your son receiving this bread and this cup knowing that is all we need to live an overcoming life 
there is healing in this place right now there is forgiveness in this place right now because of the message is within our hearts and also in our lips we can proclaim with boldness that we enjoy resurrected life as we eat and drink in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You can do it right now. You can eat and drink.